Hi, I'm Ben Jewis. Welcome to episode 39. And this week, I want to show you how you can make great cutouts and selections when you've got people that have been photographed on a green or a blue screen, or to use this technical term, chroma key. So uh, here's a couple of images and these aren't mine. These are ones that I've just literally just downloaded off the net. I've not got any on green screen just yet, but in the coming weeks I certainly will have because it's definitely something I want to experiment with. So we've got this uh, like American football here and uh, we've got this kind of scene from, I believe this is an island actually. I've had a few people comment about whether no actually know this street and this bar in the distance here. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll just quickly show you the technique that you can use uh, for taking this uh, American footballer here off the green background and putting him into this scene. Now Photoshop being Photoshop, there's going to be countless ways to do it, but I want to show you a quick way that you can do it and also how we can get rid of that green cast that you sometimes get because we know that when we shine light onto a, uh, a coloured surface, that light is also sort of reflected backwards. So we need to get rid of that. Okay, so how are we going to do this then? Well, first of all, then let's go to the uh, select menu and we'll choose color range. This is going to be a good starting point for us here. And we can see pretty much straight away, we can see that they've got a, a black covering here over our American footballer. Now, the idea here within color range is that I want to select the background because it's that that I want to cut off. So, and also it's the biggest area, it's going to be the easiest to actually select. Now, we've got the fuzziness slider here, so we can bring that up and down. I don't want to bring that too far over because that's going to start to creep uh, the selection here into my American footballer. But even if I just bring it over just a touch, that's going to help me out first of all. Something like there is looking good. Then I'm going to bring my cursor over into the actual uh, image document here and I'm going to hold down my shift key. When I do that, you'll see you get a little plus symbol appears on the color sampler. And I'm just going to click and drag around that background. And that's going to start picking up even more tones of that green down there to make it easy. Now I don't need to be too fussy about the bottom bit because this area down here, when we go into our image where I actually do the cutout, I can just paint that away because it's going to be on a layer mask. So you can see there, that's pretty quick, pretty easy to do that. That would work as well if you had somebody with like flying hair and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, and this, this kind of goes to show how you can make this a lot easier and a lot quicker if the green light uh, or sort of green on the uh, background is a very consistent tone. It'd be much, much easier to pick it up. All right, so I think I'll probably leave it there. Let's have a look at the fuzziness slider one more time. Uh, just bring that across just a touch. No, it's going to start to creep in. You can probably see, certainly down this area here, when I increase the fuzziness, it does creep in just a little bit more onto our American footballer. So let's say we'll go for around about... Round about there is looking good. Okay, so now I'll click OK. That's now going to give me these uh, these marching ants just below here. Now to hide the actual um, the green background here, to kind of cut him out, all I'm going to do is add a layer mask. But I need to add a black layer mask to hide the area that's selected, and that's the background. So to do that, at the bottom of the layers panel, I'm going to hold down my Alt or my Option key, and then click on the layer mask icon. And you can see straight away we have these transparent pixels now around our American footballer. In fact, to make it easier what I think I'll do is I'm just going to add a layer directly below this one so I'm going to hold down my command or my control key click on the new layer icon and that's going to put the layer directly below it and then we'll edit fill and we'll choose 50% gray just so you can see we've got something there so let's now click back on our American football layer and we can see there are areas at the bottom here that I mentioned that you know they were going to be quite awkward to pick up but we can get rid of those very very quickly here by clicking on the layer mask getting a black brush and yeah, let's change the foreground color to black, just a normal brush, 100% opacity, just make sure there's no settings in there. And then we can just paint that away. So that kind of area there was never going to be too much of a concern for us. All right, so we zoom out. Now this is, you can probably see now the area that a lot of people will kind of mention about having whenever they do any kind of cutouts uh, on the green background. And you can see it's really obvious here, he's got this green outline going all the way around him. Well, we can get rid of that fairly quickly by adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And again, this is just one of the ways that you can do this. Now, what I want to do is just tell the hue and saturation adjustment to only affect the layer directly below it, because this is going to go into another scene, and I'm going to bring both the hue and saturation and the American footballer into it. So I don't want this hue and saturation layer, when I bring it over, to affect anything else in the picture. I only wanted to work on the image directly below, which is our American 
American footballer. So we can do something called a clipping mask. Now, if you're in the uh, one of the latest versions of Photoshop, I'm in CC, in the hue and saturation properties, just down here, we've got this little icon, which is like a little box with a right angled um, arrow coming from the left hand side of it. That's the symbol to give us a clipping mask. And when I click on that, you'll see now we've got this little arrow now over in the hue and saturation. So that means that's only now gonna affect the layer directly below it. If you don't have that icon there, not a problem. Just put your cursor between the adjustment layer and the American footballer, hold down your alt key, and then you get this little symbol pop up, which is a clipping mask. And then to apply it, you just click just the once. So same kind of thing. Now I'm gonna choose from the master, uh, the drop down menu here, we've got the masters and all the colors. I'm gonna choose greens. And I'm going to desaturate it. Just take the saturation slider all the way over to the left-hand side to desaturate it. And that does a pretty good job straight away. If we just zoom in now, so we can see before and after, before, after. Pretty good, but there is still some trace of like a, a greenish kind of tint going around him. Now, you might find that the green there does actually contain some yellows. So one thing I tend to do now is just choose the yellows, and I also desaturate those as well to bring them right down. So we can bring those yellows right down like so. Okay, there we go, so that's done. Now, the problem with that, because <laughs> this is the thing about it, when you, there are a few little things that you need to sort out when you're doing this green. You probably see there's like a, uh, a line now going around him. You can actually show it better on his leg here. You can see this kind of like gray line going around the outside of him. And that's actually going around the whole of his body. So we need to get rid of that now as well. Now, if you've seen any of my uh, cutout videos on my YouTube channel, you know there's a technique where we can kind of make a selection of this area, very, very rough selection. Then we blur it and then we go to levels and bring the black point in. If you haven't seen that, go to the compositing playlist. Now, another way we can do it just very, very quickly is actually click on the layer mask itself. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this really, really quick. So I've clicked onto the layer mask. I'm then gonna to go to the filter menu, choose other, and then choose minimum. And you can see straight away there it disappears. That line there disappears. So that's before, after, before, after. And you can control here how much of pixel radius that you want to increase. Obviously you don't wanna to go too far because then your person's gonna disappear. But you wanna take it down. Certainly one has a good effect but I can still see elements of it. So I'm gonna take it to two. And that does a pretty good job of actually removing that dark outline now. So you can see very quickly, we've got rid of the green color cast, and we've also now got rid of that line going around the outside. So let's just click OK. The last thing I'm going to do at this stage, now that we've got rid of the green and we've got rid of that outline, we do have quite a, a jaggedy kind of outline now around our American footballer. So we need to soften that down. So again, I'm clicked on the layer mask itself. I'm going to the filter menu, choose blur and Gaussian blur. And I'm only gonna use maybe one pixel radius here on the blur. So let me just zoom in, look on his shoulder just here. And we'll go before, after, before, after. So that kind of smooths that out now so that we've now got a pretty good cutout very quickly when you do this a few times. This is a very, very quick way of doing cutouts. And like I said before, especially when you've got some uh, flyaway hair, this is a great technique for uh, using cutouts for flyaway hair. You can see now why the movies use this kind of stuff. So we then just click OK. So that's that. We now need to bring him over into our background scene. Okay, so to do that, what I'm gonna do, I've got the uppermost layer selected, which is our hue and saturation. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and click on the layer containing the American footballer. Then I'm gonna get my move tool from the toolbar on the left hand side, and I'm gonna click within my document here, click, drag it over to the tab for my background, keeping held down now, drag into the image and then let go. So it kind of places it all in there. Now I need to resize and we'll reposition. Let's put him so as, as if he's running through the streets down here. Let's go to free transform and we've got to edit and free transform and we'll just resize him a touch as well. So we'll go for something. Yeah, we'll go for something like that maybe. Obviously he's bigger because he's nearer the camera. Yeah, that'll be fine and we'll click OK, that's looking good. Now I might wanna change the perspective of him just a little bit so it looks like he is actually kind of on that road, at least a little bit better than what he is at the moment. But before we do that, I can see just a very, very faint line here coming down. This is 
part of the background coming through still on our layer mask. So I'm just going to click on the layer mask, get a brush, a black brush, and I'm just going to uh, click at the top, hold down my shift key and click at the bottom. So that's going to kind of paint off. I don't know if you would have seen that on the screen there, but I could see like a little bit of the, the background line there coming through my image. Now I want to uh, change the perspective of them, but I'm not going to do it on this layer here. We've done a little bit of work so far to cut them off the background, so I'm not going to do it on the layer that we've got here. I'm just going to create a copy of that by pressing Command or Control J to create a duplicate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the one underneath. That's only done just in case I make any mistakes and I can always go back. Now to do the perspective thing, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do something called apply mask. So I'm going to click on the layer mask now containing our American footballer cutout. And I'm going to right click. And I get an option here called apply layer mask. And when I do that, look what happens to the layer. It kind of makes it look now as if it was only ever cut out completely from the background. Like there was no layer mask applied. So basically what that does, that little a command there, apply mask, it basically says, look, here you've got your image looking as if it's cut out. Your American football looks as if it's cut out the background. When you click on apply mask, it just goes, well, you want it to look like that. So click, right, there it is. We're applying it, that's what the layer is. Now the guy has actually been cut out. So it's a destructive way to work, but that's why I've kept this one here underneath to be nice and safe. Okay, so let's try and change the perspective of him. And this is just experimenting, now. this is just playing. So I'm gonna to go to the edit menu and we're gonna choose perspective warp. I mean, a Photoshop CC, this is a great addition that's coming to Photoshop CC. And all I want to do is just zoom in. I'm just going to lay down a bit of a perspective. Let's just get these handles here. So let's drag that down to his foot. This one kind of like on his shoulder area. And that one there. And that one. It's only going to be a two-dimensional kind of like twist on here. But just to change the angle of his feet and stuff. Just a little bit better than what they are. Something like that's fine. Then I'll go to the top left. And I'll click on warp. So now I can click and I can change the perspective of him just here. So I want to move his feet over a touch, something like this, and something like that. Just so I change the angle, because it looked to me like the angle of his feet weren't matching the angle of the actual road surface. Now, you can never beat photographing people in the same angle as what you did in the background, but these are off the internet, so I'm just kind of like adapting these. So it just looks a little bit better at least. So we'll go for something like that, and then press Enter to commit it. And I suppose we might as well do some uh, very down and dirty shadows just to finish it off. This is just playing around. Let's just uh, create a very, very quick shadow. So I'll duplicate this American footballer. And the one below, I'm going to go to click on that one, go to edit and free transform. And let's just change the angle of this one here. Let's just drag that up. Let's flip it like so. I mean, this is a really down and dirty shadow. We just want something on the ground. I'll just put it there. Some kind of a blurred shape will do for this. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll go for that. Then I'll hold down my command key, click on the thumbnail so it loads it as a selection, and then go edit, fill, and we'll fill that with black from the drop down menu, and then go select, deselect. And then when we look at the shadows over in the distance here of these people, we can see the direction they're coming, which is why I've placed the shadow coming this way, but they are quite blurred and quite faded. So I'm just gonna go to filter, uh, blur. In fact, let's go convert for smart filters first of all, just in case we need to change the amount. So we'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let's bring this right up now, so really soften down that shadow underneath. Something like that's looking good. I'll try and blur at the same amount as what these guys' shadows look like over there. So I reckon that's around about 10 or 11. Click OK, and then we'll lower the opacity way down, just so it looks like there's something. And let's just add a little bit of a shadow under his feet. So I'll add a blank layer, get a brush, make sure my foreground color is black, and we'll zoom in, make a brush nice and small, and then we'll just add a little bit of a black mark just there where his foot's touching the ground, and a little bit thicker the further away you go because his heel's raised. And just a little bit just under there as well. I mean, this is just playing. Shadows are one of those things you've got to take a lot more time doing. So let's just lower the opacity on that layer now, just so there's something there. And there you go. And I might actually just do a little bit more of a color effect on him. So I'll add uh, another hue and saturation adjustment layer. Again, I'm making sure I'm using that clipping mask so it doesn't affect anything but the layers directly below, which is our American footballer. And I'll just desaturate him just a touch like so, something like that. He's looking a little bit too bright maybe for me. So again, I'm just playing now. We can go to a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. 
click on that at, uh, clipping mask. Let's just bring down the brightness a touch. And then before I finish, these trainers here, they're bugging me. They need to be a little bit darker. So I think I can darken those down by coming down to the layer that contains our American footballer. Just to the right-hand side of the name there, I'll double-click on that to bring up the layer-style dialog box. And I'm going to use one in here called Gradient Overlay. I'll click on the gradient itself within the central part of the dialog box. I'll choose the second one along called Black to uh, Transparent. And click OK, and then now I can use the angle to change the direction I want this light source or the shadow area to be now. But if I put my cursor in it, I can click and drag. I just want to darken down those trainers just a touch. And again, this is just me playing. This isn't exactly how it'll be, but I didn't want to finish it looking really bad. I thought I'd just leave it at uh, something like that and click OK. So there you go, we've cut out our American footballer off the green background, we've brought him over into this scene and just added a few effects. But the main thing about this tutorial here was showing you how to come or cut them off that green, get rid of that green colour cast, which then will obviously appear around uh, the person that you're cutting out, and also how to very quickly get rid of that dark outline. Now, one of the most common questions I get generally when I'm giving talks, seminars, and workshops is, why do I use gray and why not use the green or the blue, just like you've seen in the video now? Well, to be honest with you, there is no real kind of uh, technical reason. You know, there's no difference really when it comes to doing the actual cutting out. There's a few extra steps, but one isn't better than the other. It's more of a logistical reason. You see, when you're doing the green screen and the blue screen, you have to have additional light to light up that background. That green or that blue needs to be a very, very consistent tone to allow you to make a very, very good cutout. So that's all it is really. It's just a case of having to have more lights with you on set. Uh, you also have to kind of think about what is your subject wearing because if you've got them wearing predominantly like a, a green a bit of clothing or a blue bit of clothing, that will also be affected when you're doing the cutout. But it's great, it's a great technique if you're looking to drop backgrounds in very quickly. There's just an extra couple of steps in the retouching, but as you saw in the video, they're very, very quickly overcome. But hey, that's all for this week. As always, if you've got any questions, then just drop me a line to glenn at glennjewish.com or leave a comment in the comment section below. Below. But please, like I always say, the only support I ask of you guys for checking in, and I do appreciate you looking in, is just to click on the subscribe button. That's all I ask. And if there's anybody else out there that you think might like to see the content that I'm pushing out each and every week, then just let them know about it. Let them also see all the content, all the free stuff that I'm posting out. But hey, like I said, well, for now, that's all for this week. I'll see you next time.